Hello and welcome to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up with the first and second teams for the Southeast Highway Super Conference, but first, today's top stories. Taylor Bartholomew was crowned the 2023 Washington County Fair Queen in a ceremony at the Washington County Fairgrounds. The high school senior expressed her thrill at the winning the title and thanked her supporters. Six contestants competed in the pageant, with Zoe Dendler named first runner-up and Greta Searin as Miss Congeniality. Throughout the event, the girl showcased three outfits, answered questions from the Master of Ceremonies, 2023 Miss Iowa Alyssa Guthy, and shared personal experiences. Bartholomew spoke about her passion for helping others, expressing her intent to use a potential $10,000 prize to adopt a child. She also discussed her role as a bucket bottle mentor for Clover Kids, teaching them how to care for animals. Apart from the pageant, Bartholomew actively participates in various activities, including the Future Business Leaders of America program and sports. She plans to pursue a career as a pediatric pharmacist at either Drake University or the University of Iowa. During the event, all contestants chose their fathers as escorts, with Bartholomew emphasizing her father's unwavering support. Delaney Anderson, the newest Henry County Fair Junior Queen, and Rihanna Van Duren, a 17-year-old contestant, wowed the audiences with their performance at the Bill Riley Talent Show on Thursday night. Anderson, a 12-year-old singer, delivered a captivating a cappella rendition of Take Me Home, Country Roads, impressing the judges with her solid voice, pitch center, and confident presence on stage. Despite a nearby car alarm disrupting her performance, Anderson remained unfazed and stayed on pitch flawlessly. Her outstanding performance earned her a spot as a Sprout contestant at the upcoming Iowa State Fair. Meanwhile, Van Duren's t- lyrical dance solo in the senior category stood out for its technical prowess and engaging performance. Her skillful execution of movement tricks and beautiful turns caught the judge's attention, earning her a place at the Iowa State Fair. Van Duren threw nervous, expressed excitement about the opportunity to compete at the state level. Several area students are engaged in a summer construction project building a market-ready house near downtown Kelowna. The initiative, a joint effort between the city, the Greater Iowa City Area Home Builders Association, local businesses, and students from Durant, Washington, Mid Prairie, and Highland schools, aim to provide valuable work experience for students while addressing the local housing market's needs. Funded with public money, the project has received overwhelming community support, impressing Kelowna City Administrator Ryan Schlaba. The city purchased most of the building materials from local suppliers, fostering collaboration with the community and local businesses. Project supervisor Tim Rouse, an industrial arts teacher, expressed his excitement about the opportunity for students to work alongside skilled professionals and acquire valuable construction skills. The initiative's success has led to discussions about making it an annual event. Participants like recent graduate Ken Nash and homeschool student Andrew Shepard praised the program for offering unique learning experiences and a chance to connect with peers. The Henry County Fair hosted a special Kids Day on Saturday, providing a day of fun and educational activities exclusively for children. Local organizations collaborated to offer pony rides from Wendy Acres, face painting by face art by Brandy, a bounce house, and a game pit courtesy of the Iowa Army National Guard. Educational tables hosted by the Henry County Sheriff's Office, Henry County Public Health, and ADDS engaged children and parents alike. ADDS distributed goodie bags and educated children about the importance of avoiding prescription misuse. They also encouraged mindfulness about inviting kids to express their feelings on a large poster. Other activities included distributing sweet peanut butter hummus samples, running an obstacle course, and promoting fitness and healthy lifestyles. Kids of all ages enjoyed the day's event, making it a successful and enjoyable experience for families. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the weather and sports. Since 1905, Kelowna Cooperative Technology Company has helped our community stay connected with the latest advancements in clear, dependable telecommunications services. KCTC provides rural Iowans with access to high-speed fiber internet, as well as phone, television, computer repair, and cybersecurity solutions. We're also proud supporters of local organizations and area schools within the community. KCTC, keeping Kelowna connected. When you aspire to be a dancer, you are both an artist and an athlete. Your strength combines with beauty and grace seamlessly. Your efforts result in enhanced coordination, the ability to cooperate and compromise with others, and the confidence to perform in front of an audience. Not to mention the fun you will have and the lifelong friendships you will develop. We are enrolling now for fall classes and we would love to see you shine like the star that you are. Join us for Dance and Tumbling at Stairway to the Stars. 
please visit our website for online registration. At the Capper Auto Group, we put our customers' needs first and understand that everyone is as different as the vehicle they select. We offer new Ford, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram vehicles in a friendly environment that puts you in the driver's seat. When it comes to service, we maintain factory-trained technicians and competitive pricing. The Capper Auto Group still believes that service after the sale provides the best customer experience. Come see the Capper experience for yourself. Hospice isn't a place, it's a type of care that focuses on living. Servicing a seven-county area, the Hospice of Washington County staff of nurses, social work, hospice aides, spiritual and grief support, volunteers, music and massage therapists are able to provide free end-of-life care where the patient lives. We write wills, give consent for organ donation, but rarely is there a plan for what we would want the final phase of our lives. At Hospice of Washington County, we encourage our patients to be in charge of their health care decisions while maintaining quality of life. You know, it's not a question of what all you have and so on with your life. It's who is in your life and how much you care for them and how much they care for you. And Tammy definitely cares. Hello and welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, your five-day for forecast, but first, obituaries. Madeline Marie Hatter Sanders of Dallas, Texas, passed away on July 10th at the age of 96. A graveside service will be held at the cemetery in Millersburg on July 20th at 10.30 a.m. Dr. Gennaro L. Salazar passed away on July 14th at the age of 75. Arrangements are pending at the Kimsey Funeral Home. Elma Schaefer of Libertyville passed away on July 16th at the age of 72. A celebration of life will be held at 10 a.m. July 21st at Benner Funeral Home. David E. Derby of Mount Pleasant passed away on July 14th at the age of 60. Memorial service will be held at 10.30 a.m. July 22nd at the Kimsey Funeral Home. Barbara McCoy Pittman of Palmdale, California passed away on June 18th at the age of 90. Services will be held at 11 a.m. July 15th at Palmdale United Methodist Church. Benner Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. That was obituaries. It is now time for your five-day forecast. We had a little bit of rain this morning, but it has since cleared off in the high is 81. We'll get a break from the rain on Wednesday and the high will be 86. Then we'll make a return on Thursday morning with a high of 87. Friday will be 83 and partly cloudy. The weather will continue to get better on Saturday with a high of 83 and mostly sunny skies. We're going to take another quick break and when we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Federation Bank is a locally owned bank providing award-winning customer service. We believe that we are more than just a federation of banks, but a federation of communities serving Brighton, Richland, Wellman, and Washington, Iowa. Federation Bank's highly skilled staff is here to make sure you are able to accomplish your personal and professional goals, whatever they may be. Federation Bank, your family bank. Family owned and operated by Andy and Sarah Ross, Ross Auto has been your vehicle repair and maintenance headquarters since 1935. We specialize in all makes of cars and light duty trucks. With our variety of available services, let us help you keep rolling and your vehicle operating efficiently. Services include general auto repair, alignments, brakes, fuel injection, and more. Schedule your appointment today at 319-653-5656. That's 319-653-5656 been in healthcare for many years. I know that Tammy's that person who wants to help others and take care of us. She knows the healthcare business and wants to take care of others. Welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. It is now time for sports. The Southeast Iowa Super Conference North and South Divisions showcase an exciting softball season. Highland leads the Union area with eight players named to the first and second team lists in the SEISC North. 
Meanwhile, Van Buren County boasts six players selected from the South Division. Both teams finished as runner-ups in their divisions with Highland ending with an 18-11 record and Van Buren County finishing at 19-8. Highland senior pitcher Jessica Krause earned unanimous first team selection for her outstanding performance. Other Huskies on the first team list include Sarah Burton and Peyton Brune as infielders, Miley Smith in the outfield, and Abby Stransky as a utility player. Columbus sophomore Lily Coyle received a unanimous first team selection with an impressive 623 batting average, the third best statewide. New London and Hillcrest Academy also secured players on the first and second team lists. Tatum Wolford from Wapolo was named the Player of the Year in the SEISC North, and Lauren Summers from West Burlington Notre Dame claimed the SEISC South Player of the Year title. Jason Hawk from Central Lee was recognized as the Coach of the Year. For the full all conference list, visit southeastiowaunion.com. That's the news for Southeast Iowa. I've been your host, Nick Steffens. This has been your news break, and I will see you next time.